Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Paranormal Highway. Today is kind of a, another interesting topic. The Amityville Horror House, the Conjuring House. What's the bigger story for you? Not for what the public says, what's popular in you know the culture right now. What's, what's the bigger story? You know, I don't know how you want to base it on. You want to base it on what you feel what, what's more true, what's more fake. But what's the bigger story for you? So in the chat, there's a poll. You can vote right there. Vote Admiral Horror or vote The Conjuring. And then, so while I played the intro, you know, we get some votes in. And let's just, you know what? Let's just get this party started because I'm excited for this one. I, I am truly excited for this one. So, so while I got the intro on, put in your votes and uh, we'll see what happens. kind of show this is just like a fun kind of show because there's no right or wrong if you think the Anvil horror house is more of a bigger story for you the conjuring house and there could be all totally kind of different reasons why you think one's more real one's not one's a hoax one's a fake or you might think both of those are hoaxes i mean it's 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 hard to you know to say how you should choose but hopefully at the end of the show we kind of get an idea on what is the more popular house now both of these houses were haunted in the 70s. The Perez, The Conjuring, which the Perez, The Conjuring, because of the movie, the name The Conjuring, but the Perez, you know, The Perez, that was around 1971. And of course, everything that happened with the Amityville Horror happened starting in 1974, November 13, when the Defoe family, when the son went and killed all the kids in there. So they're both in the 70s, but we know in the beginning, the Amityville Horror was everything. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. It was everything. You know, you had the book that came out in 79, or was it 78? And then the movie came out in 79. It was something like that. You got the movie, and then you had the sequels. I mean, and, and it kept going and going and going and going until Time Warner, Warner Brothers, James Wan says, hey, let's look at Ed Lorraine's files. All right, let's start a Conjuring franchise, which they didn't know that the first one was going to be a hit where they're going to make a franchise. And then they went back to the Perez family way after the Amityville Horror. What, what, 30 years or something or so? And now everybody knows the Conjuring franchise to the point where nobody really knows. Everybody's forgetting like the individual stories, you know. They just know everything as the Conjuring House, uh, Annabelle, you know, the Anfield incident. Everybody's mixing everything together now because of the name The Conjuring. So, you know, will people vote and say it's scary to them because The Conjuring is more in the uh, limelight than Amityville Horror? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't wait to look at the uh, results. But let's start with the Amityville Horror first. Let's look at the background and let's talk. Let's talk about the background. Let me pull up. I do have a video of, um, give me a second. Actually, let's, I, I want to see what 
we're voting kind of right now. So right now, it's 50-50. Wow, 12 votes, 50-50, right down the middle. You know, it's going to be somewhat, too, if you think about it, it's going to be somewhat of a generation thing, really, right? Because a lot of us grew up on the Amityville Horror House. Newer people, the younger people grew up on the Conjuring House. So it could be a generation thing or could be that it's just fresh in your mind. So let me play a video of some of the uh, some stuff on the Amityville and then I got some uh, real facts. And I'll do the same thing on the Conjuring to see if, I don't know, if some of these information that I give be good enough for you. Amityville was just a drug addict that murder his family on the rest. Yeah. Hey, Harley, you could probably be absolutely right. You know, you could probably be absolutely right. So let me play um, one of the videos and, you know, we're going to, we're going to get down to dirty. We're going to get dirty here. All right. Amityville horror. Here we go. Does the Amityville horror. Here we go. Let's play the first Fast. video. Does the Amityville Horror House still exist? Yes, the Amityville Horror House still stands to this day. Many people and families over generations have lived in the large home. In this area of Long Island, New York, the haunted house was located near the South Shore, which was mostly inhabited by the wealthy class. Real estate was expensive because of its close proximity to the Atlantic Ocean. The majority of the nearby residents owned boats and or yachts. Although, as you can guess, the property value dropped after the infant mass murder of a family of six. So this begs the question, who would want to live there? Based on the fact that everyone knew such an atrocity took place there, why would anyone want to? Most people were too creeped out to purchase the home because of the many conspiracies and paranormal theories that arose in the aftermath. Did anyone live in the Amityville Horror House? Yes, the first family to move into the stigmatized household was the Lutz family. With uh, just so you guys know, when when they bought the house, the house was at eighty thousand dollars. So when they bought it, you know the last time does it, guys don't look up the internet. Do not look up the internet. Do you guys know the last time the house sold what it sold for? The from eighty thousand to the last price they sold the house is mind boggling. I mean it's just like wow. Oh my god, jeez. You know, hey, exploring Harley. Um, I'm trying to see if you guys are gonna pick it. Um, exploring Harley. If you want to, I don't know. I don't know if you're home. Uh, I don't know if you're home. But if you want to jump on and give us uh, your point of view and all this while I play these videos, you're w more than welcome to jump on. So I'm gonna put the streamer link inside. But it's for um, exploring Harley if he wants to come on. All right, the house, the last time the house sold was $1.5 million. I just put the link, Exploring Harley, I just put the link in the uh, chat. You can just jump on it. $1.5 million. Within the month of a bitter cold December, a family made a chilling decision on where they would live. At the time, a family of five moved in. The wife's name was Kathy, and the husband was named George Lutz. The parents brought along their three kids. According to the Lutz family, the reason why they moved into the Amityville Horror House was because they were poor. Looking at the home and not knowing what took place, most people would say it's a dream home. In 1975, the Lutz purchased the house at a massive discount of $80,000. The new occupants of the Amityville House claimed they saw ghosts, spirits, and paranormal activities. Some examples of what the Lutz claimed to witness was levitating objects in the house, the garage door would move up and down for no reason. Daniel Lutz, who was just eight years old at the time and is now in his early 50s, talks about the experience he had in the haunted house to this day. Daniel Lutz claimed that every time it was 3.15 a.m., something would happen as 3.15 was a devil number according to him. He also claimed green slime-like goo would drip from the walls. The entire Lutz family in 1975 saw paranormal and frightening things. Take in mind, the family didn't stay in the house for long. In only 28 days, the Lutz left the home, professing to have been threatened by paranormal oddities while living there. View vast. Okay. If 
you don't know how popular this thing was back in like 1979, I found some old video clips back in 1979. Let's check this out. The Cromedies who bought the house have packed up and left, driven away by an onslaught of tourists and pranksters who still continue to come and gawk, not fooled by the now changed address out in front. Now, why did you come by tonight to look at this house? To see what that book was all about and everything about the house, the way it looked. And all the people, this that people video is from 1979. Oh, we just wanted to see what it was like. I guess we just specifically came from Chicago to see it. Well, do you believe all the stories? Yeah, I do. They're kind of creepy. They gave me the creeps that... Why do you believe it when the present owners say there's no truth to it at all? And they've been living here for almost two years. Oh, I didn't know they had present owners. I thought it was deserted. A man who said he was a friend of the Cromedies also came by, but insisted he not be photographed. You say a friend of yours lives here and you've been in the house. Is there any truth to all these stories that it's haunted and there are weird smells and slime and all those other things? Nothing at all. Uh, it's all a bunch of lies. Well, how do you feel about all these tourists coming by and the movie opening and all of this? What, what do you think of that? Well, I live right down the road and it's pain in the neck because you can't even get down the block. But when we started rolling the cameras, I had no idea just how much of a pain in the neck it was for the man now temporarily living in the house. As Frank Birch and another man came to the porch, I walked up the driveway to talk to him. He refused and demanded I leave. I thought I did so fairly quickly, but apparently not quickly enough. Within minutes, a police car arrived, then another. Birch came out and told the police he was pressing charges, my crime trespassing. I begged for mercy. None was forthcoming. I was shown into a police car and driven to the Amityville police station. Inside, officers pulled out eight separate forms to be signed. I sat by nervously while my camera crew waited outside. Mercifully, I was finally able to convince Mr. Burtz that I had not intended to cause any problems and had not in fact been aware I was trespassing. He signed forms rescinding his charges. I signed forms releasing him from charges of false arrest. We shook hands, and after more than an hour in captivity... I now, guys, that was back in 1979. I'm just showing yep. you guys how this thing was huge from the beginning. Real or fake, you know, that we're going to debate that in a second. But... 1979 people outside the house think about it you're the owner you bought this house you know the history because they have to tell you the history of the house right they have to tell you and then you know there's no book yet no movie then there's a book and the movie and now you have all these people go outside your house going around your house i mean seriously that that's got to be annoying it is and hi harry and thank you for having me <laughs> um it is, and the difference between both houses is um, how the media and how the, um, the movie company um, drove it. Um, for the Conjuring House, like the Perron family were, were on it. The, some of the family members um, uh, even were there as uh, technical advisors uh, for the movies. On the other hand, on the Amityville, they just released a movie. And, and the house, well, the family was not there anymore. And um, the guy was in jail. But they just assumed, like, to, to go there. Like, there was not nothing put in place around like pr protecting the house protecting the family and opposite on uh, the conjuring house and the conjuring house they builded a story uh, around a legend that is attached to this house yep and uh because oh yeah, and we're gonna get we're, we're gonna get to all that because i got notes yeah. for all of it because right the now, hauntings itself are not from the house itself because it is more believed that it could be the land more than the house because the story of Bechiba that's all made up it's all made up <laughs> oh it is now I'm, I'm gonna give you guys some facts I got some facts I have a chart with facts first we know Ronald Defoe shot and killed six members November 13th 1974 Defoe we know, we know that's a fact that, that really happened. Then we know the Lutz family moved in on December 18th, 1975. Much of the Foles family furniture was still in the house because it was included for 400 bucks as part of the deal. 
Yep. A friend of George Luce learned about the history of the house and insisted on having it blessed. Now, right off the bat, you can you know there there's there's something more in plan with the Lutz family because when you look at the I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but if you look at the Lutz, like where they're at with the money wise, they couldn't really afford a house. So yeah. they bought a house, even though it was eighty thousand bucks, it was cheaper, but they were still buying a house that was a little bit out of their range. It's almost like they knew what happened there and they were gonna plan something. I you know, we can't prove that. Well, Back then, it was like it was. It wasn't really like uh, paranormal and, and stuff like that. It wasn't really a thing. People were like more. Well, it's a cheap deal, and it, it's a beautiful and big house. And I, I could like if I turn around and sell it, and I can make a quick a quick buck. Or they weren't looking at. Mm -hmm. Well, there was like a quadruple murder in there. Could it be haunted? They probably didn't stop there. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the law was on houses back in that day, but I know like like houses in Washington, they have to tell you what was previous done from the last group. But the two groups before, they don't have to. Yeah, but so that... So technically, that's... if that house law was here... They wouldn't have to tell me about the murders. If I moved in after the Lutz, if I bought the house in Washington, they could tell me, they'd tell me about the Lutz left in 28 days, but they don't have to tell me about the murders because that was two owners ago. I yeah. mean, that's the law we had actually here in Washington. I mean, I don't know if that was part but of it. I don't know what their law was. Those laws are fairly new because back in the 70s, I, I'm not sure if you were – like entitled to say if anything happened anyways in that house it was all over the media so if the guy goes around and say oh i didn't know about it well on what planet were you living in the past <laughs> like three years it, it there are things that are known and there are things that are unknown and when you get a haunting uh, just take as an example, the Hinsdale house. It sat abandoned for a while. And that house went from hand to hand to hand to hand. And it, it, it they lost track of the owners at a certain period. Uh, there's rumors that are um, like uh, uh, bandits that were uh, robbing stagecoaches and killing people and buried them in, in the basement. You have those stories. Um, you have the story of the Dandy family that came there in the seventies and had that that house cleansing and the the living room shook. So it, it is, and it is thought that a Hinsdale house. It's more than the land that is like. I wouldn't say curse, but it's like. They had battles before those houses were built. They had uh, native were oh. worshiping the land and everything like we know. So all North America yep. would be considered cursed okay. land. And or, I do have real facts for the for the conjuring, and we're gonna get to the conjuring about about ten about, about ten minutes. I'm just spending on the Amityville, then the conjuring, and then we'll relook at the vote. Now here's some more. Here's some other uh, um, true facts. Okay, of course the day they moved in, the couple had a priest bless the house, which that was not unusual. A lot yeah. of people have their house blessed when they moved in. They join a church. They get a, a especially, especially yeah. in those times. Yeah, yeah, especially those times. They religion was way more passion than it is now. <laughs> now, now during the um, where the um, the the priest, minister, whatever he is, was blessing the house. Now, the claim was here. Let me see here. Uh, I got it right here. The day they moved in, the couple blessed the house, but George claimed a – now, now, see, the kids, now, this is the thing. Now, George claimed – now, this didn't actually come from the, the holy man himself, but George claimed the holy man felt on unseen hand slap in the sewing, uh, sewing room and heard a voice says, get out. 
that was through George again, not the holy man. So did he say to get out from the holy man? Well, again, secondhand information. Yeah. It's coming from, again. So take that with a grain of salt. And then here it says, the Lulz later collaborate. So when they left for 28 days, this is kind of interesting. The Lulz uh, uh, later calibrated with Arthur J. Anson for his best-selling book. The, the family has said they never signed a contract with Anson in that, in that tone and successful spinoff. What they mean is they didn't sign like, like, like a contract where Jay has part ownership of the name Amavel Horror House. Mm -hmm. So when the movie company picked it up, the Lust family picked up $300,000. And the writer of the book, because of the contract, didn't get any. I know it's not a huge thing, but let's just say the, the Lust family made some money. Now, I don't know if part of the deal, they got residual, you know, you know how successful it was or if it was just a flat fee of $300,000. So they got $300,000 for that movie. And back in the 70s, that was lots of money. Oh, that's a lot of money. That that was a lot of money in the 70s. So, it, and it, it's the same for the Conjuring House. The parent family, some of the members of the family uh, received a big, a big payout. I, I think um, one of the, Laura, I think, wrote a book and they based one of, uh, one of the movies on one of her books. So she made some money out of that. But and, then and, he says, and the get out part, I can't in a way believe it. And I'm explaining. Last weekend, I was supposed to go do an investigation in Ontario. And you know me. I, I'm not the kind of guy that will tell you bullshit. I get I got attacked by an entity. I have a get out clear as day on camera that we caught when I was outside trying to regroup myself. When I finally decided to get out of the house because I was feeling too much, I was feeling too bad. On my way back, I blacked out for a moment. I pulled over. I got out of my car. I puked like I never puked before. I got back in my car. I had to pull over and sleep for about 15 to 25 minutes. My dog, she's feeling my stress because I'm reliving that, that, that period. And I had to lay down for 25 to 30 minutes. And when I came to me, everything was like it, it, it like happened in a in a flash. But everything happened probably in a span of probably an hour, hour fifteen minutes. And that's the thing, you went through all, through all that, and according to eyewitnesses of the Amityville, the the parents stuff, they were cool as cool. They 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 didn't feel no like 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 something happened to them. Like it should. What the stories have they've told? When an entity decides to attach or attack or just kind of render somebody uncomfortable, he will he will choose. Like when I went investigating in that house last Sunday, I was probably the more I I could, uh, sorry. Listen, I, I, I protected myself with oil and sage before going in. So was the entity saying, you're trying to protect yourself? I'm going to show you that I'm stronger than that. And you went for me. <laughs> that, that does make it more powerful. And now, they right are. Before, now, right they before are. we talk about the conjuring, Sorry, here's, there, here's a couple few more things. Many people expressed doubts about their horror story, which fell under even more uh, when uh, Defoe's defense, uh, defense attorney, William Weber, admitted he and a couple, uh, he couple came up with the tell over several bottles of wine. Now, now, first of all, 
I would never want that lawyer to be my lawyer because I don't care if you're a crook, you're not. You, when you got a lawyer, you're, he's supposed to keep the secret with you. Regardless, right or wrong, the lawyer works for you. Yeah. But but it kind of t- – why I bring that up is it's because it kind of tells you that it became about money now, you know, that, that the attorney wanted money because attorney is not supposed to give out information if your client – are right. uh, frauds <coughs> or fakes? They work for you. They, yep. you know, it's <coughs> it's so, called the client lawyer client confidentiality. Exactly. If, if you break it, you lose your license. You lose your bar privileges. So, and then, you know, I, I bring that up because nobody really brings that up, and that's a fact. Uh, then it says George's stepson. Uh, who was seven when he lived in the house, uh, says the events in the in the book and movies had been stretched to the point of fiction. Now, first of all, that's not that's easy to say. I mean, we all know it's been stretched. And the kid and was seven years old. And it's normal. It's normal that any kind of movie that you will see, even a movie depicting the life of any kind of history figure or even a, a, a movie on uh, historical facts sometimes they will embellish it yep. it's normal it's hollywood it's a movie yeah. so if something to you could be not really spooky but for them they will render it spooky yeah for for the public to be spooked <laughs> Yeah, and then if you guys didn't know this, uh, the, the the stepson also said that George was obsessed with the occult, and has had and had exaggerated <clears throat> some paranormal incidents he believed did occurring when he was a child. Now, first of all, and, and remember, this kid was seven years old, so it, you know he probably didn't know the whole thing going on. Now, 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 now right before we get to the Conjuring. I, this is my opinion on the whole thing. Can the house be haunted? I believe all houses are haunted in some kind of a level. There's ghosts everywhere. Exactly. But this house did have six people who died. So I can see where there's some evil mojo there. Because remember, Ed and Lorraine Warren came into the house after they left. So they weren't there during when the event happens. Yeah, they caught this cool picture, which I believe they did catch a ghost. I believe the house can be was somewhat haunted, but it was over exaggerated. It was over, and it, and I believe that George now that he did, you know, he he gambled himself too. But the guy, they weren't financially set before the house, so it wasn't like he had a lot to lose. Yeah. So and- I believe, you know, but I mean, I mean, six people did die. We're not going to say the house is not haunted. There is a haunt. It's just not at the level as what they've said. Actually, you know, we all hear about this famous Red Room. If nobody knows exactly what the Red Room looked like in that movie, here's a small, short video real quick. My name is Patty Camarado. I was friends with Allison DeFeo, the girl who was murdered with the rest of her family here in 1974. This I'm going to show you is a mysterious red room that's so noted for in the book. This door, which they say was never here, was here, is here, always will be here, I suppose. This is the red room. Nothing more than a storage area where Allison and her brothers and I used to keep toys. Just red, you know? There's never any feeling of spirit presence or ghosts or any sort of thing like that. It's just play area keep toys nothing more than that yeah if you guys remember in the movie he took a uh uh he was breaking down a uh, bricks yeah. bricks <clears throat> and he saw like the face so the red room was just a playroom uh, they overall. will make it what they want when they yes. make a movie yes. but like the little girl goes and say that's the red room and even if it's not the red room the same red room that in the movie it's not because that little girl didn't feel anything in there that nothing happened 
We don't know the stories nope. before that. It's just like they made it that the door didn't exist. It was a brick wall and it was like kind of a secret kind of room. <laughs> But it's it's Hollywood. They, they will it's make Hollywood. It. Now, guys, we're going to jump to The Conjuring. Now, people in the chat, I'm just letting you know, if you think I'm going a little bit fast, it's just because at in 45 minutes, I'm actually going to be on Bigfoot Michigan Rob's channel as his guest. Uh, the link is pinned. So... Uh, hopefully, I see all you guys over on this channel. But I got a video on the Conjuring House, the true story the, behind the house. I got some facts. And then I got, you guys heard Harley. He knows a lot of history there, too. So it's going to be fun now exploring the Conjuring House, which is technically the Perez. The Perez. And just like a, a, a last uh, kind of like to close Time it for the Amityville. Wrong one. I was, I'm, I was born in 1973. And I was a kid. I was very young. And I was hearing my sister talking about the Amityville house. Story so, behind I'm sorry. I was pressing pause. Just getting it ready. You can continue. No, that, that's it. That, that just like to tell you <laughs> that how much big of a, of a thing it was but even back then. Because even here in Quebec, my sister were talking about the movie and the hauntings and everything. So... And before we talk about the uh, the Conjuring House people, just like as a little bit past history before they went to the house, the, the Perez family were also didn't really have a lot of money to buy a house. They were in a bad neighborhood where they actually had another dog that died because it got loose, got 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 the, the rope, got stuck on, on a car wheel, and it died. And they had four cats. They had kids. This is a true story. The kids broke into their house, destroyed their house, and they killed. Uh, I think one cat survived at the hospital. They killed three of their cats. So they had a lot of Bad tragedy stuff. already kind of yeah. happened to them where they lived. So, again, they had to buy a house that was a little bit out of their means, too. Not saying that's not that's not reason why it's haunted. Just giving you guys a little past tense that that they don't they don't tell you about the press family, that they had a – They, they were living in a bad neighborhood. I mean, God, that, they, they, they the, crushed. This is sad. They crushed their cats. Yeah. It's And the, the neighbor kid, who they know they did it, basically the cops didn't have enough evidence to bust them. So they actually got away with it. Yeah. So it's... it's a. It's they a, they went through stuff, but they, they found that little farmhouse and they decided... And it, it was a nice house back yeah. then. Yeah, you guys, we, you guys will hear how, nine rooms. Here we go. Conjuring. The Conjuring received positive reviews upon its initial release in 2013. Critics everywhere praised it for its all too realistic depiction of a demonic haunting of an innocent Rhode Island family. However, the true story of The Conjuring is based on Ed and Lorraine Warren's terrifying true experience. In January 1971, Carolyn, Roger, and their five daughters moved into a 14-room farmhouse in Harrysville, Rhode Island, and almost immediately began to notice strange things happening. Carolyn would notice that the broom had vanished or seemed to move from one location to another on its own. When no one was in the kitchen, she would hear something scraping against the kettle. She'd also discover small piles of dirt in the middle of a freshly cleaned kitchen floor. The girls began to notice spirits around the house, though they were mostly harmless. However, there were a few who were enraged. Carolyn allegedly researched the home's history and discovered that it had been in the same family for eight generations, with many of them dying same under family. mysterious or horrifying circumstances. Several of, of the children had drowned in a too. nearby yeah. creek, one had been murdered, family. and a few had committed suicide in the attic. The spirit that was depicted in the film called Bathsheba was the worst of them all. Andrea Perrin said that whoever the spirit was, she perceived herself to be mistress of the house, and she resented the competition my mother posed for that position. It turns out that in the mid-1800s, a real person named Bathsheba Sherman lived on the Perrin's property. She was said to be a Satanist, and there was evidence that she was involved in the death. Oh, that, she... that is not true. Just... That is not true. That's again, 
go and watch the um, the Arisville hunting the real story of the conjuring house it's my friend matt benton who is the producer and the director of that movie go and watch it the real story of the house is in there okay Bathsheba sherman was yes a housemaid but she was working for the neighbors she never lived in there so that's another you have the stuff in the story that you have to be really careful even the story of ed and lorraine warren it's not true that they helped them no. they went there yes but the dad kicked them out yeah i got it right here Roger kicked the Warrens out, worried about his wife's mental yep. stability. According to Andrea, the family continued to live in the house due to financial instability Probably. until yep. they were able to move in 1980, at yep. which the spirits were silenced and the uh, uh, haunting ceased. Yep. And Andrea Perrin is the one that wrote the book, I think. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't have to read that part, what you just said there, because I, I also have some real facts about this place, too. So you already you already got that one. That's awesome. Let's, let's hear a little bit more of this. Of a neighbor's child, though no trial was ever held, she was laid to rest in a nearby Baptist cemetery in... If, just for the record, people, a lot of a lot of things in the 1800s and stuff never went to trial. You know, that's not, that's not unusual back in those times. And they, the baby... Died when she was, yes, a maid or a, a, a member of the personnel of the house, but she, she was never accused of, the, of that child. Of, and back in the 1800s, you had those witch hunts. When something happened to somebody, if you didn't like the person, oh, he's a witch or she's a witch. Mm-hmm. They were fast on that. And the the sad thing is that, that Bathsheba's grave was uh, broken. She was desecrated uh, many times. And she has nothing to do with that. If that name came through in a haunting, was, was there another person named Bathsheba that was hunting the place and she was like the scapegoat because she was like working for the neighbors? We don't know, but she has nothing to do with that. Yep, let's see what else they say. In here. Harrysville, the parents believe that it was Bathsheba's spirit that was tormenting them. Andrea claims that the family was visited by other spirits who smelled like rotting flesh and caused beds to rise off the floor. She claims that when her father... Again, people, that's nothing normal that you hear stories about haunted places, smelling flesh and stuff. That's actually normal. Not saying every every haunt is going to smell no. something, but no. And <clears throat> the thing is, that house <coughs> behind the house. <coughs> sorry, there was there used to be a village, and there's a, an abandoned graveyard right behind the house. Oh, you think some of the smell <coughs> might be coming from that? Okay. I didn't saw it personally, but if you go see um, <clears throat> many videos on uh, the Conjuring House, especially, uh, and I'm not friends with them, okay? Because I saw those videos. You have exploring um, exploring with Seth or Seth Borton. Um, you have exploring with Josh. I know that Sam and Colby went there and they went to the that said graveyard and uh, John Huntington, he was led to that graveyard with a spirit box. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Let's hear more of this. Father entered the basement. He felt a cold, stinking presence behind him. They avoided the dirt-floored cellar as much as possible, but the heating equipment would frequently fail mysteriously. Oh, I... I, I... Apparently, there's. It is supposed to be a real fact. I, of course, I can't prove this. That they say when they enter the house, that the cellar was actually boarded up. The reason why it was boarded know. up, I don't. I never heard the reason why it was boarded up, but it's got to be a reason why would you board up such a big room down there? I'm not saying because 
they were trapping ghosts or anything down there, but it's supposed to be a real fact that the that the cellar room was boarded up. And the the thing is that Corey Heitzen, the previous owner, because it's not Corey anymore that owns the house, it is um, actually it's the, the 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 realtor that was supposed to sell the house. She kept the house and made it as a, a paranormal research center. Yeah, and that's the cool stuff. But Corey had some GPR done in the backyard, and there are bodies buried in the backyard, yep. and it could be uh, um, bodies from uh, uh, soldiers from the Revolutionary War because there were sm skirmishes during uh, the Revolutionary War in that area. So. You have to keep that in mind. That was in Rhode Island. In Rhode Island in 1776, you had those skirmishes and you had those fights between the, the Continental Army and the British. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously, causing Roger to venture down. Over the 10 years that the family lived in the house, the Warrens made multiple trips to investigate. At one point, Lorraine conducted a seance to attempt to contact the spirits that were possessing the family. During the seance, Carolyn Perrin became possessed, speaking in a language no one knew, and started rising from the ground in her chair. Despite the fact that the film version of events concludes with Ed performing an exorcism rather than a seance, Lorraine insists that she and her husband would never attempt one because they must be performed by Catholic priests. After the seance, Roger kicked the Warrens out, worried about his wife's mental stability. According to Andrea, the family continued to live in the house due to financial instability until they were able to move in 1980, at which point the spirits were silenced and the haunting ceased. You know, there's another story that I never, I didn't dig deeper into because it, was, it wasn't anything special but one of the owners of the house when they made the movie kind of like the Amityville Horror House people were coming to the house yeah. crawling through the bushes and all that she actually uh, sued Time Warner for some, for I can't I can't remember what she called it because because of what they did in the movie I think it was breach of peace or something, something like that something like that yes yeah because think about it you had like the Amityville Horror House you're the new owner you make this movie then, like, bam, everybody's coming to your house, crawling. She was afraid they're going to break into the house. I never saw what was out the outcome of that suit, but there was a lawsuit against Time Warner, and I could see the owner's point, like, but I don't know, if, 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 if they're going to put the words based on a true story, and they're going to say it's this house, and somebody else lives there, I think that, 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 that the company should, like, either – buy their house or something or offer something because but the thing is nobody knew where the house was it's a no, journalist people find out <laughs> yeah the, and 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 that's the difference between the both of them in the 70s you didn't have the socials that we have today and that we had when the conjuring house came out it, it like you have a big difference and back then they use the actual house to shoot the movie, but not in the conjuring house. They use a different house because they wanted to protect that one. And then people discovered that place and started just driving down the 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 the, um, the little back road right there, or driving up the driveway, taking picture of the house. Yeah. So. Sometimes it's not really the the the, the movie company that are um, really to blame. It's like the public or the people that wants to see more, but they wanted to protect that house. And another correction on that uh, documentary: they didn't, didn't, they didn't really do their homework. The the um, warrants just went there one. Not multiple times, I, I, once or twice, but not multiple times. No, yeah, I think it was all. I think they just went there twice. Twice because the second time was when they were kicked out, and they mm -hmm. were kicked out. And those are the words coming from uh, 
uh, Miss Perrin herself. And, and the Amityville Horror watch... House, they only went there like once or twice after the Lutz moved out. And yeah. Even in the infield incident in in the UK, they went on the on the outer on the at the end of that whole ghost incident. So they get credit too. They get a little bit too much credit, but not saying they're wrong or right. I'm just saying they get too much no. credit. Now here's a um. Uh, Conjuring is supposed to be uh, in an interview with one of the um, of the families, the parent families that live there. Based on a true story, in 1971, the parent family moved into their dream home. It's going to be great. But they didn't know it was the site of a brutal murder and countless horrors. I know there's an interview What here. happened to the family was so disturbing, they refused to speak of it until now. First day, the owner said, do your family a favor, keep the lights on at night. There was a heaviness and there was a scariness. Things began to happen. We started to see multiple spirits. Because I was the youngest, I was approached more than anyone. Follow me. This year. There is something beyond our mortal existence. We waited 30 years to tell our story. Of course. Because 30 years ago, the world was not prepared for this. The country. Now, it's not much of an interview, but we know the movie's exaggerated. Yeah. But but what, let's say this now. Now now we're going to break everything down. We're going to bring everything together. Now, there is a difference between Amityville and The Conjuring, as we know, going to date. Every owner at the Amityville that lived there since then says nothing has ever happened. You know, now... Now, did they have they have a little haunting? They just don't want to bring it out because if they, because one thing, one people say, well, Eric, if they say they they still have hauntings at the Amityville, they're gonna, um, you know, they're gonna have more people outside uh, outside the house. Now, the Conjuring House, you could rent a day and go in there investigate. And we had our yeah. own friend Amber's Perry World went there, and she says she's caught some friends. things. I have friends and I have people that with whom I've called up with uh, Paranormal XP. They went in there. Uh, my friend, Matt, my friend, Matt Benton, that made the movie, uh, The Harrisville Haunting, the real story of The Conjuring House. Go and watch it. It's on his channel. He released it like free for everybody to watch now. So go and watch it. And Andrea Perrin is in there and she tells everything. Like little snippets of interview you saw there, you'll have more on the Harrisville. And if you, if knowing you would do that, I would have texted Matt and asked permission to use some uh, snippets of his uh, documentary. But I, I don't want to use anything without uh, asking permission first. And I don't have my phone. <laughs> well, let's see here. So far, um, I'm looking at the poll that I put up on YouTube right here. Uh, 35 votes, only 35 votes so far. 63% Amityville Horror versus uh, 37% The Conjuring House. And I, I, like I said, I can see that because our age group, we grew up longer with Amityville versus The yep. Conjuring. So we know more. But, but so hard. So I got both here. So in your opinion... What house, in your opinion, is most haunted? Is more haunted? I know. It's, I know. It's. I would say fifty. I would say fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. I would say fifty yeah. fifty. But um, if you want to really feel the paranormal, if you want to really um, interact with the spirits that you probably not see, but they talk about in the movie, the Conjuring House is accessible. To investigate, but not the Amityville house. Hey, did you ever see? I didn't know they did this. Um, I'm, I, I was trying to find it here. Let me tell you. Uh, let me, let me, because where is it? Where is it? Um, hauntings they, could be different goodbye. because I had I had people saying that. Um, oh, uh, pl those places are more and more haunted because you know, people go in more and more and investigate those places. That is not true. I will pull <laughs> up. I will pull up a, a, a clip of the house when I was uh, attacked by the entity. And that place is 
empty. It is deserted. It is a, uh, abandoned since the early 70s. And uh, uh, go uh, show your clip and I'll, I'll pull up mine. <laughs> well, and then I, I didn't know this. I was researching Amityville yesterday. And, you know, when Taps group got canceled, when they came back, they originally had a show called Ghost Nation. Apparently, they had an episode that they were allowed to go into the Amityville Horror House. And when I went to um, to find that video on Max and stuff, because they own it, I, I can't find it. But watch. watch. To 2020, and this hello the to the new year with a good it. scare. A new documentary series explores a true tale of a famous haunted house. Ooh. Cody has more. Whoa. All right, Jason Hawes joining us now. From He's a paranormal investigator. Jason, I got to say, I, I really got into TAPS. And, and what got me into TAPS, your original show, uh, was that you were a plumber. And I figured... I don't care about the plumbing shit. Well, no, so Ghost Nation is a show I, I do it to a travel. They talk about it. Come on. It's more diving deeper into... Uh, into the, the house, what happened, and the claims, oh, okay. uh, diving deeper than really anyone has before. But um, yeah, we, uh, we all know the, the sad history. November 13th, 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr. shot and killed six members of his family while they slept. Um, December 1975, George and Kathy Lutz bought the house and moved in with their three children. I don't need to play the rest of it because he's no. explaining about the house history and then and his group actually went in there. Did yeah, anybody but... see that? That... I haven't seen it, but <laughs> the guy had like the TV show before. Yes, yes. Taps. Like put put Jason Hawes and put Jeff exploring Harley going and knock to the door of that place and saying, "Hey, I want to investigate this place. I want, I want the real. I'm going to be turned around with a boot in my ass, and Jason Hawes going to be taking coffee with the guy because probably the guy saw him on TV. So that's the thing." And I don't, I, I will never say bad things about TV investigators because, well, they do TV shows, okay? And you, you don't catch stuff all the time. No. But they have those media backing them up to go and investigate those places. The the only thing I'll give him credit over Zach is he has said that he has admitted that 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 the studio when they go into a house they don't give him enough time to actually research it because all the lights and cameras and everything they put up he only really gets two hours to investigate when it looks like they're there for eight hours he actually brought that up himself so I'll give him credit to say that he wish he can have longer times. Jason Hawes is a true real or real paranormal. I will I will um qualify him as a, a real paranormal yeah. researcher because the guy wants to know and he knows that you don't have enough time in like two or three hours to yeah. properly investigate a place. When I, I I put up a video, I condense most of the good stuff that I caught. Makes sense, yeah. Well, yeah. But sometimes we're there for four, six seven eight hours we're and there I'm sure you overnight. guys are not putting up all those lies like a tv show would be so well you know, you're in the, you not, go there you actually get to investigate it sometimes yes i have a, a lighting set but that not is, like not like discovery plus would oh do. no I, I, that's what i meant i i have like a limited budget <laughs> um <laughs> but i have a set of lights that I can put up if if the place is like too dark or anything but I, I want to show like the real dark stuff. I want to show um, um, the IR shoot, uh, the, 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 the IR footage that I have. I even, I, I've just ordered a new uh, uh, Phasm camera to have more night shots, more IR shots because working in the dark, well, the veil is thinner at that moment. And without saying that, even during the day, you can have kick-ass proof. Uh, can you roll the clip down? Uh, and there it is. Bottom Let's do there, this. Please? Yeah, we please. Got, like five minutes left. Let's do this. It's like it's just us. I heard that. Yeah. 
and and the camera you saw in the mono you see on the monopole that that's my camera just i'm just gonna replay knowing. it again guys guys you can hear it put your that put your that's ears. that camera i'm gonna replay it again people put your ears because i heard it loud and clear and i got hearing problems here we go it's like it's just Right there. Wow. And at that, that moment, Roxanne, Rob's wife, she's like in the doorway where the steps are going down. And I'm outside trying to gather up and to compose myself with Rob. And I'm like thinking about going because I'm not feeling well. And even Rob, the guy I was investigating with, he told me they stayed there probably for an hour, an hour and a half, and they left because they were all feeling really uneasy. And Rob was feeling sick as well. So probably he, att he attacked the men and the rest were ladies. So he just like spooked the ladies by like making the men sick. And yeah. So people, right before we leave in the chat, so what's the bigger story, guys? Is it the Amityville Horror? Put one for Amity Horror, or you think the bigger story is the Conjuring House. Put two. There's no right or wrong. It's just what it's what hits you more. So hit one if you think Amityville Horror. Two for the Conjuring. Put it in the chat. Curious what everybody's gonna put. Even though there is a poll, but I like I love it when people in the chat gets involved. Now that one, Amityville Horror. Interesting. Interesting. I I I actually honestly. Uh, exploring a Harley. I actually honestly thought the conjuring was going to get a lot more because that's more in this the, the spotlight now versus versus the ammo video. You know what I mean? Yeah, the conjuring because conjuring is everywhere. The conjuring, yeah. the conjuring, the conjuring. They made it big, they, they made, it, made big. it, they made it big. So, oh no, 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 yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the name of his time. handle. No. That's his name, was Zando. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I love that. Don't you think? I love that handle. No. <laughs> no. Thank you for the 10 pounds. <laughs> and all that. And, and guys, tomorrow is going to be such a, a fun, interesting show. Because tomorrow I'm going to have Cosmic Neighbors and my brother, who's an archaeologist. And we're going to talk about con uh, alien contact. I know I call it the first contact, but it's contact with satellites. So what I'm talking about tomorrow is, you know, we sent out a satellite to invite them here. Are they coming here because of the satellite or are they sending information through a satellite? You know, and can, can, are we building a satellite that can, I know it's crazy. How are the duck going to different dimensions and bring you here? So we're going to be talking to Ron who really knows his satellites. Like, mm -hmm. are we going to get more answers of aliens exist through satellites versus hoping they come here on the planet Earth. So it's going to be an interesting conversation. That's tomorrow. going to be really interesting. <laughs> Can't we see well, it, it's going to be cool because uh, Ron is great with NASA and satellites. Yeah. My brother Bob's archaeologist of of the ground, like everything they 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 study is from the wow. ground. So so like so it's like if they do come. How will we study an alien? What you know? Well, no, you know what I mean. So I got yeah. two different kind of a uh, people. You know, how will they come because of a satellite? And if we do get one, how will an archaeologist study an alien? Wow! I, big respect to your brother. I really I have utmost respect for archaeologists because I I wanted to be one as a kid. <laughs> Not really like Indiana Jones, but I was always fascinated by finding something out of the ground that was from another from another time so major respect yeah and he used to work for uh the smithsonian in washington wow. dc before and, <laughs> and uh, there's some stuff he can't tell us in certain rooms and he also used to work uh a lot actually for the uh boeing museum uh, 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 museum of flight yeah well wow. so he knows every every wow. airplanes he knows he knows all that so so it's That's gonna be really fun. Cool. So so guys, I'm gonna uh uh in 14 minutes, uh Danny put here that I'm gonna be a guest on Bigfoot Michigan Rob's channel. That's why I started 15 minutes early, and I appreciate Harley for jumping on too to give well, us his thank opinion you for having me. about it the was... subject because these are fun. You know, there's well, no yep. right or wrong. 
you know Any, it's just anytime you have like hunting subject hit me on if i'm available well, well, everybody eat. knows now that going forward monday is going to be ufo monday bigfoot tuesday and thursday is always paranormal and then friday is whatever i want it to be kind of a kind of a just doesn't matter so so each day i have a certain day for a certain project and i'm going to be doing more of these paranormal of uh, what's the bigger story type of deal? Because it gives us the opportunity to talk about an event that has happened and give our opinions on it. I have, have one for you right now. Which country is most haunted? Canada or the U.S.? That will, that's going to be next Thursday. I like, <laughs> I like that. I like that. Those are fun. Those are fun. <laughs> What is technically considered most haunted, you know? Exactly. I mean, how, and 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 the, what's interesting is how do you judge that? You know what I mean? Like exactly. Like, like that's gonna be fun. So beyond that, guys, uh, I'll see. You, uh, hopefully, all of you could jump over to Bigfoot Michigan, Rob. Yeah, that'll be awesome. I'll try. So, I'll so check first. if I don't have too many work. <laughs> I know. So beyond that, guys, I'll see you later. Uh -huh.